confident that things are going going okay. I'm gonna take that purple that I used for the lay-in, and it's a middle value. That means I can use it wherever there's a middle value. So I can throw some of that in there. I like the these shadows coming across here, and I don't know what color they are, but I know they're a middle value. So I know that that purple is okay for me to use. And I've got the same thing going on here. I can put a little bit of that in there. And I'm slowly building my painting up without a lot of detail. Um, detail is really tricky. Um, our culture now, we have a lot of HD, a lot of really intense detail. But painting doesn't require a lot of detail. It just requires enough detail so that your mind can fill in the blanks and make the painting work. So I'm back into the sky area now. And I'm lightening my value a little bit. But I'm leaving some of that beautiful blue that's underneath there. Always try to leave what's underneath because that will create a vibration that you can take advantage of. All right. And um, when you have a blue sky, a sunny sky, a little of that reflects down into the grass too. And this is the right value. A little bit light. Let me make it a little bit darker. That looks a little better. And I'm going to drift some of this in here just to kind of indicate the light reflecting from the sky. And now I'm going to go back into my darker values and punch those up a little bit. So anything that's a dark value I can use and I'm reaching for the purple. I'm a big fan of purple because it's such a versatile color because it's red and blue so it's warm and cool at the same time. And because of that, it's just really, really rich. And it's sort of an antidote to green. Um, some of the galleries, they complain about paintings that are too green. But if you have a lot of purple, you'll never get that complaint. And I've got some small little cedar trees that are on this little hillside. And I'm just going to indicate kind of where they might be. OK. So I'm keeping my value idea, which I established with my lay-in. And I'm just kind of following along, just building up as I go. I've got this beautiful, intense green. Again, this is the right value. So I'm going to throw some in there, but I'm not going to kill the yellow that I've got. So I've got this beautiful strip of light that's cutting across in here, and it's cutting across in here, but I'm leaving some of that green underneath to show through. Okay, and I've got, um, I'm going to go for something a little bit less intense. because it's not really in the bright sunlight. There's just a little bit of sunlight leaking over into here. And where a, a dark shadow meets a light, there's always a little bit of a, a carryover. It's not a hard, a hard line. And there's sort of a little transitional area and I'm going to try to indicate that with this beautiful green tone. And it's a middle tone, so I might just throw some of it back in here. So I'm getting some good color in here. And um, I'm getting good color because I'm understanding the values that I've got going. This is a, a nice an olive, and I'm going to go back in and 
restate this a little bit. Because the value's right. And maybe in my some of my cedar trees that I've got going in here. So I've got some good color going. And my underpainting is now completely dried. So I don't have to worry about that anymore. And I'm getting a different feel when the, the pastel builds up. I'm going to go back in and restate this yellow. Now, I don't know. All I know is that there's a big, warm bit of sunlight. This is late afternoon when this photo was taken. But there's this beautiful strip of sunlight cutting across here. And that's really the point of the painting. That is the idea of the painting, is that um, this low raking light that happens right in the evening, it's sort of a golden time for artists. Artists really like to paint at that time of day. Maybe I'm getting this orange, which is slightly darker in value, and right around the edge where I have that transition, I'm going to throw some of that. And maybe I can bring a little bit over back into my cedars. This is a nice color. This is a, a lighter lavender. And this is a great color for my tree trunk that I've got here. Tree trunks are something that when we're kids we think of them as being gray they're usually not gray. They're usually either a lavender or sort of a blue color. Um, I don't use a lot of gray because I think that if I mix colors I can get a lot prettier color than just grabbing a gray from my box. But right here I've got this neat little cow path that's coming down like this and that's a nice kind of interesting feature that I need to take advantage of. And it's kind of in the shadow and it's going to link these areas together. Okay, I'm going back into the dark value, a beautiful dark value green, the same value as the purple, and I'm going to restate that a little bit. And the dark colors really tie the painting together. The dark colors are become sort of like the bass note of your orchestra. Really important to give it richness. And right around my tree trunk, I've got a nice shadow going in there. And I can see. And I need to restate my shadows a little bit. They've gotten a little bit weak. That's not dark enough value. So, let me look in here. That's a dark enough value. Again, some purple. I'm going to throw my cast shadows across. I'm going to throw some of this beautiful purple back into the shadows. I don't know what that color is that's in those shadows, but I do know what the value is. And I'm, I'm staying in the right value. So I'm in good shape. And now in the darks in my background, I'm going to use some of that middle value back here. And this is right what I want because this is bluer in tone. This is going to give me an illusion of distance as I go back. Okay. And maybe I need to get a little bit lighter on my tree trunk that's in it's getting some getting some good light and I'm getting some good light on this trunk there. Okay. So we're we're kind of inching up on where we want to be. And that's the kind of the way I look at painting is you're um, you're on a journey, it's a process, and you just have to kind of go with it, stick with it and 
Never panic until it starts to go the way you want it to go. This is a little bit more of an intense blue. And I'm trying to think when I'm, as I'm painting, I'm kind of thinking how these colors go together in my painting. I'm thinking about the colors that are in the light, I want them warmer. And the colors that are in the shadow, I want them a little bit cooler. So this is kind of interesting. I've got these little yellow flowers that you can see up in there, but I need they need to be in that value range, but not stand out too much. So I'm going to take a, an orange instead of a yellow there. Even though it's a yellow flower, I need a darker value so it doesn't pop out too much. And I'm going to throw these little dots in there. And now I'm going to go and bring this. I'm going to look again for where my light is hitting on these cedar trees. And you can see that that orange looks just super with the, with the purple. Good combination. Okay. And maybe a little bit getting down into here. And if it's too bright, I can know I can just go in and take a, a green of a similar value and I can drift over that orange but I don't want to kill it I want to leave some and that'll give me a beautiful kind of a vibration there. and I'm I'm using a lot of different strokes you can see I'm using what um, a side stroke which is a stroke kind of like this and I'm also using more drawing strokes like down here in my grass I'm using these little drawing strokes that follow the contour of what the grass is and they give me some variety if I used all side strokes it'd be boring if I used all hatching strokes it'd be a little dull but if I use them both I get the advantage of both and I need to get a little darker with that shadow. And I'm going to be bold and try a color like this. Ooh, that's a nice color. This is cobalt. Again, cobalt green dark. It's the right value. And I'm seeing it that I can use it right down in here in this area that's in shadow here. And I'm liking this color really well. And some of this is going to drift in over here. So when I'm using a color around the painting, I'm sort of tying it together in a neat way. I've got little cedar trees down into here. And then I've got a few going right into there. And although we haven't used tons of colors, um, I don't have a box with 500 colors, I'm getting the sense that there's a lot of color in my painting. And, and that's because I've just used some bright color and some dull color together to create exciting color. All right, I'm back in to this pretty green again. And I'm doing this little transition area again. Nice middle green. I think I need to kind of work. Now this is a blue, deep blue color, beautiful color, one of my favorite colors. And it's the right value. And you might say, well, cedar trees aren't blue. But if the value is right, stick it in and it'll work fine. So I'm just going to throw some, some blue in there and that makes anything that's orange really sing out. And in the deep distance, I've got 
a ridge that's way back there. And I'm going to make that really blue. And I'm going to do a little finger blending here just to kind of soften that out. Finger blending is fine as long as you don't overdo it. If you overdo it, you'll lose a lot of your character. So just a little bit is really a nice touch. I'm on my little path again. And here is a good place to do some detail. It's kind of in the light, so it's kind of a pinky color. And I'm looking at my, my photograph, and there's parts of it, just a little part where the sunlight is, is hitting there. And I'm going to throw that in. Just a little tiny thing, but it's kind of a neat little detail. And um, the purpose of detail in painting is to draw your eye. That's really the purpose of it. It doesn't really have any other purpose. So um, I try to keep that in mind, that, I'm, that I want to draw the viewer's eye. And at the end of this trail is a nice big streak of light. And I'm going to work back in. I'm getting away with some really bright colors because I'm thinking in terms of value. With that beautiful green again. And the field itself is actually green. So the sunlit area is going to have a lot of green in it. again these trees right here they're getting a big bunch of light and they're sort of spotlighting these cedars in front of them so I'm gonna highlight that up a little bit okay maybe throw a little bit more green up in here and I think we're getting to a good point Again, this is a middle value green color. And you can see that some of that purple underpainting that I did is coming through and giving me a nice kind of a glow. Maybe I'll get that beautiful turquoise again. And I'll do a, a glazing stroke. Glazing is a, just a very gentle pressure. This color looks great with orange, so I, I kind of know that from experience. So that's one of my favorite a little combination that I've got. This is a little bit of a brighter red-orange, and I'm going to throw some in these cedar trees because they're getting a lot of light. Now if I throw them some green, That'll neutralize that orange a little bit, but it won't kill it. And that's really what I have in mind. And I'm just going to look for a couple more lights and then call it a day on this demonstration. So when I'm looking at this painting, I've, I've pretty much stayed within the design that I laid out when I started with my, with my values and my underpainting. But along the way, I've added a lot of color and I have a lot of color excitement going on. I've kept some of my underpainting. I've thought in terms of value got some more of this green that's kind of leaking over back into here and I'm going to kind of tie this together a little bit and 
one more thing I see in my sky it's kind of boring it's just a blue so I'm gonna look for a pink that has a similar value but it's a different temperature the blue is cool pink is warm and when I put these together without killing either one I'm gonna get a beautiful glowing color it's going to add a lot more interest and since I have a lot of sky area in my painting I need to have some interest up there so I encourage you to use color value in your painting it's a great way to to really beef up your color and um, make an exciting painting thank you <laughs>